Carl here. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, photography in the sixth installment of ten art series for National Moth Week. Um, I started off photographing at, at uh, in situ, essentially in the environment where moths were found around lights, and then I went to a sheet, and uh, and I was always trying to photograph moths as they were sitting. Now, if you see here by by this. Uh, 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 bug zapper. Uh, 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 we see this uh, Foesia here. We see um, a little, um, probably Scoparia here. We see a Zotheca here. And we see up here uh, uh, an Adonis here at Macaria. And, uh, and then way up on top, we see a Raphia. Now, this is the way the lot, the moths sort of organize themselves around the light if they don't end up in the trap. But these are really difficult to photograph, and the angles are just terrible. So uh, if we took one of these off and, and put it in the refrigerator for just a few minutes, and then took it inside where we could adjust the lighting and the angle of the camera, I think we'd get better pictures. And that's what I've decided to do for the last seven or eight years, anyway, with my moths. It's more about moth portraiture rather than moth pictures. So come on in here. Here's where I do all my photography. When I first started out, this is uh, kind of what I used right here. A big old Canon camera with a, a macro lens on it and a ring light. And, uh, and I would uh, focus on the moth and uh, try and get a picture. Um, so that worked for a little while, but uh, I was always frustrated with that. Um, I looked around for a camera that would it would solve the penny test. I call it the penny test. I get a penny, throw it out on the table like this, and uh, what I do is I uh, look at the point and shoots that are available uh, for use, and then uh, I try it out at the store. Try it out at the store, and I say, well, let me snap a picture of the penny. How close can I get with a macro adjustment on a point and shoot? And uh, so I try it out that way. And this is what I found. Is uh, if you can do this with your camera, get the date, okay, uh, on a penny, then you're probably got a pretty good camera for photographing moths. And by the way, this is a good way to practice so that you hold your hand steady. Moths won't move around a whole much, not a whole bunch like butterflies will. So uh, you're at an advantage there. That's not always true. Some moths do move around a lot. We'll talk about that. Uh, this little point shoot is what I've been using for, I don't know, six or seven years. It's a Pentex WG3, and it works pretty well for what I'm doing. A little 16 megapixel camera with macro capabilities, which allow me to get within a centimeter of, uh, of uh, an object. And it does have uh, LED ring lights built in. I'm going to set this down here for now. A lot of you have cell phones, they work really well too. Um, and uh, you can try the penny test and see how that works. I won't do it here, um, but um, think about cell phones if you can't afford any of these cameras. The big old 5D will run you into a lot of money, okay, with a lens. This camera here, probably three or four hundred dollars uh, nowadays, uh, very affordable. A cell phone, you always have one in your pocket. This is what I use for photographing moths. I have a board like this that I can use as a lazy Susan. So I don't need to touch the moth at all. I can lay it down and adjust the board. I put the table and the board by a large window so the light is coming in diffuse light from one angle. I don't like really strong light. The shadows make too much contrast. Uh, and so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and photograph a moth now to show you how I do that. Look at how I'm taking it out of the bucket. Remember, put the ice pack in here. I'm putting a moth down. I use Zoa. Cap it. Drop it down onto the onto the table. Adjust it. I'll get my phone, uh, my, my, my camera, I should say here. Adjust the uh, lighting. And then I will get a reflector, which you'll see in a minute. I'll backlight it from here. Then I'll adjust here, hold it using my fingers as a tripod, and snap a picture.
this is what that picture looks like. If that's a good picture, I'll just save it. Notice how the moth isn't moving. I'm picking up the moth now. Watch how I pick it up. I have not touched the moth with my fingers at all. I put it back in the bucket. I'm going to try another moth, uh, Drasteria or the Nuzoa. These are a little more flighty. This is a day flying moth. Get the reflector out again. Backlight it. I don't like the way the legs are positioned there, so I'm going to move move it a little bit so that the, we see a little bit more symmetry. Notice how I can turn the moth around. There is the moth captured on the camera, and I'm blowing it up. So I can look at the detail. Do I need to take another picture? No, I don't. Okay. So I'm going to take this moth now. Put it back in the container, tap it down, don't want to get this legs caught in the lid, put it back, and these moths can be released. That's it. So what you need is a good point and shoot with macro capabilities, if your cell phone doesn't work, some sort of board you can use as a lazy Susan, or maybe even a lazy Susan from the kitchen, and, uh, and, uh, and a reflector. Uh, a collapsible reflector works really well because you can adjust the light and, uh, and work with the shadows. I think that's it for the photography section. Thank you very much.